Hi, I'm Joe Stoddard. I'm with Ide Bailey's National Tax Office. Uh, I work in the R&D or Research and Devel Development Tax Credit area, helping companies identify federal uh, credits for R&D as well as state benefits. The four-part test is, the, is really referencing Section 41 of the Internal Revenue Code. And that's the qualitative test that we use to determine if a specific activity is qualified for the credit. So the, 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 in terms of what, what's in the four-part test, very, you know, very, very briefly, it should be doing something new or improved in terms of function, performance, reliability, or quality. That could be a, an improvement to an existing product, for example. So that would be the first part of the four-part test, new or improved. The second part would be there has to be some uncertainty. That can be capability issues, are we able to do something, and methodology issues, how best to do it, or even appropriateness of design. So even that level of uncertainty would meet the qualification requirements. What's the best design for my product or process? The third prong of the four-part test is that the activities have to rely on experimentation. As you're working to resolve your unknowns, you have, you have a process set up to evaluate one or more alternatives. That can be through a formal process of so forming a hypothesis and testing that, or, or a less formal process of systematic trial and error. Um, so those sorts of, uh, if you have that set up, you would meet that third experimentation requirement. And finally, the fourth prong is the activities have to be technological in nature. If you rely on the hard sciences, so computer science, engineering, biological sciences, computer, uh, physical sciences, uh, those are the types of hard sciences that meet that definition. So for an activity or a project to qualify, it would have to meet each, each prong of that four-part test. So there's, there's lots of benefits. The, the main benefit would be this is a this is a dollar for dollar tax reduction. For all of the qualified dollars that we can find, and, and those dollars are typically wages and supplies and that sort of thing, uh, there's a, on the federal side there's a maximum six and a half percent benefit for this credit. So if we're able to identify $100,000 of qualified costs, um, that, that client, that company would get a $6,500 dollar for dollar tax reduction that they could use to offset tax. Well, I have a lot, of, a lot of companies or clients ask me if, if their activities or their industry qualifies for the R&D tax credit. I guess my answer would be that is the, the rules for what types of activities qualify are not specific to any one industry. You don't have to be conducting white lab coat research to, to benefit from this credit. Uh, a lot of companies that claim this credit are in the manufacturing industry, for example, involved in product development, uh, product improvements, as well as manufacturing process development and improvements. Um, software development also qualifies. So I already mentioned manufacturing, but other, in, other industries qualify. Certainly technology is an industry that, that qualifies. Software development, uh, medical devices, life sciences, those sorts of things. But it also ranges into, into other industries um, in terms of architecture and engineering, um, other industries that are, that are doing similar types of activities as well. Another question I get a lot is, you know, what which, what, what, what costs can I include in this credit? And, and really the, the main driver of the R&D tax credit is going to be wages. So we get to take essentially a portion of the time spent by the personnel performing the, the qualified R&D services and those costs are, are qualified costs. Um, we get to take both the direct involvement as well as the direct supervision and direct support of the activity. So it's really going and identifying the folks that are involved in these activities identifying their wages and then allocating what portion is qualified. We also get to include supply costs that can be raw materials or prototypes or things that you're using during the R&D process. And finally, we can also include contract research. So if you're working with a third party to help with the design or development, if you're a third party lab is doing some testing, whatever it might be, um, we can also look at those third party costs um, in terms of what costs we're going to include. So one, one hot topic is uh, that relates to R&D tax credits uh, has to do with the ability to, to make the credit calculation a little bit simpler. Uh, there's an election called the Alternative Simplified Credit that allows companies to not look back such a long time in history in order to claim the credit. 
With the traditional credit works, you have to look back as far as 30 years in order to claim, to identify uh, your base amount in order to claim the credit. This election allows you to do that, um, looking only back at the prior three year period. Um, the development is, is that now this, as of this year, they finalized regulations that allows companies to now make that election on a, on a retroactive basis, on amended returns. So now companies that have never claimed the credit before can go back to a multi-year period to claim this alternative simplified credit um, instead of only be look, being able to look at the most uh, recent year. Yeah, so we've worked with lots of clients. So one, one recent example is to work with a client in the manufacturing industry that has been developing a, a product a certain way for a lot of years. Uh, they've recently modified that to extend their product line. So they're, taking a, they're taking an existing product, making some changes to that, and, and being able to offer a new product offering. So we work with them to identify costs both on the product side and the process side that would qualify for, this, uh, for these tax benefits. We're able to identify uh, around $50,000 of federal credit and significant state credits um, on, a, on an annual basis that they can claim for this activity.